What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Monday, October 30th, 2017. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the pure one, at Tim Geddes. Let Tim host. More pure than ever. No beer. Yes. It's, it's a good look, though. It's not a good look. Okay, well, I apologize. But for the people watching that don't know, I did it for Halloween. I was Greg Miller. You still will be tomorrow, too, as well. Yes. Don't worry about that. Uh, for those listening or watching later, maybe on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games or podcast services around the globe, we are rolling into this show as our post show for the PlayStation press conference out of Paris Games Week, hence why I'm in a T-shirt. No collar, no nothing happening here. Mm. Just up, up, down, down, though. Big fan of Xavier Woods. Uh, if you didn't know, of course, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every day on a variety, every weekday, on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about before jumping into your comments, giving you some perspective on the news, taking your bad PSN names and a whole bunch of other stuff over at kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. If you like it, you have to be a part of the show there. You can watch us record it live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, but if you're not watching live, no big deal. You can catch it later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames or podcast services around the globe. As the show is a bit different today, happening very live, being put together as we go, Really need your help, live viewers. Go to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Put in your questions, comments, concerns about what you saw at the Paris Games Week press conference. We can check it out there. Have you be part of the show. Everyone will have fun. You need to do that on the other parts too for tomorrow's show. Everybody else listening later, watching later, all that stuff. Also remember, we need to be kept honest. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up live viewers. That way we can set the record straight for everyone watching later on YouTube and listening on podcast services. In terms of housekeeping... Remember, Extra Life is this Saturday. That's right, 24 hours of gaming for the big, beautiful kids. You can donate now. Go to kindoffunny.com slash Extra Life. You can also sign up, though, to be part of the Kind of Funny Extra Life team. We're trying to raise $100,000 for charity. Please go check it out. Uh, there's a new Cooking with Greggy up as well, both on YouTube and patreon.com slash kindoffunny. And don't forget, Andrew Renee, the busiest lady in the business, who will be here tomorrow on the show with Tim. Just launched a new show over on Facebook called Lights Off. You can check it off by going. You can check it out by going to Facebook.com/slash Lights Off Show. It's her and the What's Good Game Girls. But for now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Terrible time for some news. That was just god awful. I tripped. I tripped as I was doing it. God, that was the worst I, one you've ever done. I, no. Yes. No. It's embarrassment. Two <laughs> items on the Roper uh, Report. What? Two items. Yeah. Two items. Yeah. That's barely a baker's dozen. But it's a baker's dozen with the PlayStation news. Tim, we just yes. finished the PlayStation press conference mm -hmm. for Paris Games Week. Where you at? How you feeling? Mixed emotions. Yeah. They hyped us up being E3 Part 2. E3 Part 2, they said. In some ways, they definitely delivered. Yeah. Sucker Punches game finally Ooh being shown. Ghosts of Tsushima. Seeing Last of Us Part 2, cool. Things like that, I'm like, I, I get it. I get where they're, they're going. There was a lot of, of really cool games that they showed that looked sure. like smaller titles. That Erica title Erica really title interested hot. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was, a, there was a lot of new stuff. There was sure. a lot of things we didn't see that you could say, oh, that's the second half of E3. But then they also kind of fell into the trap of just showing us all the things we've already seen before. Yeah. Um, Xbox recently did this at Gamescom, I want to say it was, where their conference was essentially E3, just E3, E3 again. again. Yeah. This felt like that. All new stuff, whereas the the Microsoft thing had a lot of like the exact same trailer in yeah, some yeah, cases. Yeah, yeah. This there was a lot of new stuff for Spider Man and God of War and You're right. Detroit. You're hitting you're hitting the nail on the head. It was just the fact that, yeah, like what we talked about leading into this was the fact that if this is going to be E3 part two, what that means to me, at least and what you said as well was the fact that you would talk about what you talked about E3, but expand on the information. Yeah. Here's a date for God of War. Here's a date for Spider-Man. Here's a better date for uh, uh, Detroit or something than that. Mm -hmm. But we didn't get any of that. Right. Like no. the, cl the closest thing we get is like, we were like, okay, cool. Is that uh, what we are for? We got a window for Detroit this time around or whatever. Right. Where it's spring. Early, yeah. It's, Which, it's spring 2018. That is good because, Detroit was the one that we're like, where does that fall? Because all the rest of you know, all right, cool, first half. But Detroit was the one that, if I remember correctly, was not included in that conversation. If you it was remember at E3, thing. yeah, they showed a whole bunch of trailers that said 2018 at the end of them. Detroit didn't. Sean Layden said that if we showed a trailer that said 2018, we mean it's going to be out in the first half of 2018. Then at E3, David Cage said his game was 2018, but since his trailer didn't say 2018, no one understood what that meant. Yeah. Now we know spring 2018, which is good enough by me. I thought that game looked awesome. I can't wait for it. Oh, man. What a great showing for that game. Right. I'm, I'm good. They can stop yeah, showing I know. I'd shit. like them to stop showing things. Uh, because, yeah, it's... I also love that we've seen so many different scenarios that all look very interesting. Yeah. That game, I think, uh, trailer demos very well. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, because you can sh kind of show like the options of what, what's going on. It shows the scope of it. Um, obviously looks amazing. Spring 2018, I think, is a good time for that game as well. Uh, the pre-show. Overall, I thought that this, w besides not getting release dates, yeah. I thought that this was a v excellent press conference sure. because all of those games look great. And yeah. I thought that it was very well paced. And sure, it's not Year of Dreams. Holy shit, high moment, high moment, high moment. But there was definitely some like, oh, crap, things specifically Sucker Punch. But I also liked that during the pre-show, they got a lot of the VR out of the way. And their commitment to VR is very impressive to me. Yeah. I thought they would have given up a while ago. And this is really showing like, no, we got uh, everything ranging from the shitty like we wear trash yeah. um, all the way up to like, oh, no, we're actually going to do quote unquote triple A experiences. If, if, you're talking, if, you, if you missed any of this, you're watching us like for VR games. They had Megalith, Bow to Blood. This is it's just in the pre-show. Ultra wings uh sprint vector was on there moss again star child the resident evil chris redfield dlc uh dead hungry and stifled which are both out tomorrow tuesday october 31st and scaryish kind of games uh league of war vr arena final fantasy 15's uh vr mode in there uh in vector which i thought actually that was probably like the best looking vr game they they showed that got me the most excited with was the exception of that london thing later on but we'll talk about that mm, in a second mm. in vector in the pre-show was the amplitude like one that looked really cool it, yeah. it looked like a mix between amplitude uh thumb Bumper and race the sun. Yeah, and I'm that's sign me up. I'm totally yeah. totally down for all that. Then yeah, they had Lon London had a couple of PSVR games in there. Or no, I'm sorry, they had the London studio showed the Erica trailer, which is a play link. Real people, it, it's like actors up there on screen, and you're making Mixed choices. Mixed with CG. Yeah, in yeah, a lot yeah. of ways. I that looked very very cool to me. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the what we've been seeing recently, like with Until Dawn, Hidden yeah. Agenda. Hidden Agenda. If that's, if this looked like the live action version of Hidden Agenda up there. That sounds like a cool way to have a movie play out. So of down for that. But then London also had the PlayStation VR game Blood and Truth, which looks like a first person James Bond sla slash Taken. Yeah, I'm interested. I have a feeling it's not going to be very good. Uh, Why is that? It, it seemed like there was a lot of movement, and that doesn't translate well to mm -hmm. VR. I don't think that we've it, figured that out yet. So you're, I don't think it was free movement. I think it's going to be that thing where you run into an area, right? I don't know if you, how much you're choosing where to go. I mean, that's well, where even you're then, start. I think you're going to get sick then. Mm. Like, but we start, there we was a lot of movement around that I'm like, ooh. But like what I thought, it, what looked interesting, right, was they were in the slowing downtime, like Max Payne shooting. Mm. I assume that's the way to get around it, where this is a bit too much for me. Same with Super Hot, right? Where, sure, it's moving, but then you stop and it stops. So you have that moment of like, all right, hold on, get my bearings, do this. Yeah, Resident yeah. Evil 7, I was running around doing stuff, shooting stuff. That's true. Not no, to that you're right. action length that we saw there. Yeah, you're right. For me, the, the reason I think uh, Blood and Truth's one to watch is the fact that it looked like, at a glance, obviously, just a trailer, it looked like a AAA, hey, we're giving you a PlayStation VR getaway. Yeah. And it's like, that's cool. what we all say we want on VR, right? Mm -hmm. We see these things that are, we saw Ultra Wings, right? And it was like, oh. That looks like a Wii game, you know what I mean? But like Moss is doing something dis different with VR. That's super interesting. This one looked to be different as well. This one looked to be that more grown-up shooter you'd want out of a yeah. first-person VR game. And we got the the first look, I want to say, at the Not a Hero DLC for Resi Seven. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. Um, and that looks it looks Resi interesting. Seven. I like how you're saying yeah. that now. Uh, I, I mean, to be honest, Robin, I'm actually not up? really that excited for it. Yeah, like it it looks like it's a, a bit more of a action style Resident Evil game you're playing as as Chris and so yeah. like that's all cool but there's something about seeing it I'm like oh I'm not that interested it looked like a sh it looked like a shooting gallery yeah that's what it really reminded me of like, based mm, on that I'm, I'm okay off what I loved though. about yeah what I like loved about Resident Evil 7 right was the fact that it was hiding in this and that creep out factor it wasn't an action game yeah it was a survival and I, game. I, I think that it's good that they're doing this and it's different because it is speaking to a different audience um, of Resident Evil fans but not really for me Okay, you're allowed to have that not be for you. What other games off this list were for you? Guacamelee 2? No, but that that's a big one. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I, I'm happy they announced that there. Love Drinkbox. Everybody knows that. Super excited to see them back. Super excited to do this. It, only for PlayStation 4 is what they announced. No Vita. And obviously, they're not going to talk about any other platforms here. Yeah. But Guacamelee 2, for real. Uh, I really, I, the one thing I saw there was a 2018 game. This is, again, pre-show stuff. Was the John Woo-like uh, Hotline Miami. Hotline Miami looking the one? The Hong Kong Massacre. Yeah. That looked awesome. It, very interesting looking. Yeah. I, I think it might not be that fun to play. Like just at least based on what was going on here, it's obviously a dual stick shooter, but yeah. look, how the cursor was laid out. I was like, Ooh, my I thoughts on that is that is I'm sure that's so early. That's not their UI. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get hung up on the cursor. I thought that graphics of it looked great. Cause it looked like it does have that like dark gritty John Woo action movie feel to it. Yeah. The, and it also, it kind of reminded me of shadow complex. Sure. Uh, just I can visually. See so I'm, I'm, I'm sold.
Uh, beyond that, we, we saw this. I'm going to run through pre-show games. The Gardens Between coming in late 2018. This is the Time Pals puzzle no, game. You called that one. No, I didn't look great to me either, but it's a one-button exploring puzzle game. Whatever. Local Roco 2 Remastered coming out December 9th, 2017. What's exciting you, about fans. this is that I, I heard as little buzz about Local Roco Remastered 1 as I did about Patapon Remastered 1. So if they're giving this fucking game a remaster, unless Patapon Remastered 2, what do you say, motherfuckers? Get that? What? It, Local Roca came out, what, three or four months before Patapon, I feel like. So, like, that gives sure. a good window for when yeah. e, maybe E3, maybe. We'll hear something about uh, Patapon 2. Uh, they showed Sims 4 expansion content. Tennis World Tours coming spring 2018. Then we're into the VR stuff I already talked about. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. They showed Gant, Final Fantasy Gant stuff. 626 is saying, Tim, this wasn't even close to the first look at Not a Hero. Uh, let me know if I'm wrong, kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. wrong. But isn't this like the most substantial like trailer gameplay? Like seeing, that? I know we've seen images and screenshots and heard synopsis of it, but I didn't know that we saw actual gameplay. Uh, I saw some stuff for Final Fantasy Ignis. Uh, mm-hmm. saw, saw O Ray. It's available now. Terrible name for that game. Terrible, terrible. Name. Uh, then they also announced Spelunky Two for PlayStation Four at Which the end of huge. that conference. Yeah, people freaked out about that. And then the real conference began, and then that's and it kicked off with Ghost of Tsushima. What did you think? Because yeah, when we saw it, it, okay. it was, is this Onimusha? Holy yeah. shit. Uh, it, it had a, a very feudal Japan. This could be Onimusha vibe to it. Yeah. And I was ex- extremely excited, obviously. Uh, as it got further into it, it became clear it wasn't Onimusha because yeah. I was like, all right, cool. We would have seen some demon shit by now. We'd sure. see some orbs flying around or something. So without that, there was a moment where he called him a samurai, and I thought he was about to say Samonosuke, and I was about to lose my shit. But we saw him earlier. I'm like, that's not Samonosuke. Uh, I'm interested. I feel like it's the type of game watching it. Like once I realized it wasn't Onimusha, I was like, okay, I'm not hyped about this. You, Hype you levels brought up decreasing. like Bushido Blade or something like that. That's and what like, the chat was shouting. And I was yeah. like, okay, it could be something like that. In which case, I really don't care. It ends in Sucker Punch. That makes me go, oh, okay. Yeah. This is this is big. This isn't just like uh, churn them out samurai game. and that was in watching the trailer i was like this trailer looks awesome and the vo from it sounded awesome right of like when he's talking about you were training you were doing this what was i doing i was learning i was studying mm-hmm. you your traditions i was like that sounds really fucking cool the game the graphics of what they're showing looked really cool right yeah. and then like the different outfits and i'm cleaning the blade but my fear was if it was going to pop up and be bushido blade 2 i was going to be like i'm not familiar with that series and that sounds super generic japanese even yeah. of like and, and that's a that's a style of action samurai game that doesn't connect with me right like dynasty warriors i don't enjoy either mm-hmm. when it ended with the sucker punch logo Obviously, I'm a huge Sucker Punch fanboy. That meant I was all in. And what it, I think, meant for me was the fact that now it's going to be this westernized version of that, right? Yeah. Where it'll be the kind of combat I like. It'll be the kind of storytelling I like. It'll be the upgrade systems I enjoy. So I'm totally in. Yeah, that's true. It's definitely a game that I'm interested in seeing where it goes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not hyped for it based on there that. It, it looks fine. But it's like I feel like it's, it's like, all right, cool. That genre of game was once so pro- prevalent, and now it's not. And I think it's cool. It's like, all right, cool. Here is a, a like you're saying, more Western version of it. But I don't know. Like, is there a place for that type of game? See, you're saying that type of game. I don't know if it's, I, I, the, with them doing it, I don't think it's going to be the type of game you're thinking it is. I don't think it's going to be like action in terms of like rack up kills, do this thing, Onimusha kind of gameplay. I think it's going to be action adventure, like an uh, uncharted. I think it's going to be where people are always like, they want the Assassin's Creed to fucking go to Japan. That's what I'm taking from it. Hmm. It's going to be a third person action adventure kind of thing hmm. with role playing elements in it. Okay. I think it's going to be more story narrative based, you know, think of yeah, the yeah, infamous yeah. world, but you're a samurai. All right. Not with the climbing probably. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll have see. To know. Uh, right next- now I'm like, okay. Not like, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, then, uh, that'll give you. I'm like, I'm, I'm more excited. Soccer Punch is finally fucking putting out a game. Yeah. Uh, next up was Pixel Opus. Their game, Concrete Genie, which is Cool Greg, uh, Delson Rowe mashup. Yeah. It's, I love it because it looks like a quirky PlayStation 3 game in terms mm-hmm. not the graphics. The graphics are great. You're running around with basically a magic uh, paintbrush it looked like on your back, painting these uh, really intricate things you're designing as you go, creating creatures on the walls. They interact and help you solve puzzles, but then there's some bully kids that are bullying you up. Mm-hmm. You, it looks like a cartoonized Delson Rowe doing all this stuff, but it looked like a weird PlayStation game that seems like it'd be fun to do, which I don't think they do enough of anymore. Mm. Then, yeah, just showed Erica. We got a PlayStation VR Dude, sizzle reel. Erica. Yeah. I am so excited for that. This is, again, live that, action one from London Studio. Coming through there, I was like, whoa. 
You're making me care about this type of game. I'm shocked about that. That was not PSVR though, right? That was no, PlayLink. That was PlayLink. That's okay. a PlayLink title. Yeah, that looks fucking awesome. Yeah, 100. percent If you're oh, listening at home or you just watching, you didn't see the trailer. Or yeah, it's a trailer you're going through. You know, you're navigating the different choices up there. There's a little bit of interaction of like wiping a tear off her cheek and stuff like that. But you seem to be living Erica's story and making choices for her. As there's a little bit of crazy, maybe demony kind of things happening when they're like, "Don't open the seal. Don't break the seal." See what happens there. PlayStation VR, uh, did the, like I said over there. Uh, then they ran through the unique benefits you'll be seeing on some of their partner games. They showed Far Cry 5 and co-op. Of course, Far Cry 5 coming out in February. Showed Destiny 2, a trailer for Curse of Osiris, the first expansion for Destiny 2, coming December 5th. Uh, that looks cool. I'm you know into Destiny 2. I'm looking forward to playing that. Monster Hunter World got a trailer. It was like whatever, but then at the end, Aloy was in it. Aloy is a playable character in the PlayStation 4 Very version cool. of Monster Hunter World. Awesome. Plus, on December 9th, PlayStation Plus gets a beta, and I guess this is a PlayStation uh, exclusive beta. Uh, they showed Call of Duty World War II, uh, obviously November 3rd. Uh, the Resistance, uh, however, is the first DLC, and it's coming on. It, I, think it, I think I got this date right, but again, kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. January 30th on PlayStation 4 first. Um, also, I, I'm, that's like a sleeper hit for me of like, man, I'm still looking forward to that. I really want that story of mm. Call of Duty World War II. Mm. We'll see what happens. Uh, then they showed that Detroit thing, which was uh, just fucking phenomenal. Yeah. You kidding me? Battlefront was in there too, right? Star Wars. Oh, yeah. They should, but it wasn't like there was like literally no news about that one. Yeah. Like, oh, we're partnering it's with them. It was just like, here's the trailer for Battlefront. I was like, oh, right. Yeah. Anyways, Detroit though popped up. Detroit, man. Cage. God, that looks so great. This one was uh, Kara, the robot you know and well who, from the, originally the sex bot, mm -hmm. uh, but now in this game, this game world, getting brought new new house. She had had her mind wiped, you know, trying to connect with this kid, and clearly the the dad's a piece of shit. And so, like, how are you going to save it? And they showed all the different outcomes and stuff. So cool. Spoiler that trailer. Can't wait for that game. Spring, spring 2018, which we can say now. They it showed, looks beautiful. Yeah, uh, one of the other partner games or whatever was Onrush. But oh yeah this racing racing code masters yeah I, looked pretty good yeah because i know it's like those type of racing games they're a little generic and samey but i was like all right that one looks not that it's doing anything different but it looks like it's of a, a level of quality that i think we haven't seen for a while for that type of game at least in the playstation ecosystem uh, i got another look at god of war still no date we thought i thought for, i thought that one was the shoe in shoe -in. when we when we, we saw spider-man a uh, great trailer Focusing on Peter, Peter talking to MJ, saw Aunt May for the first time, see Peter and Miles working together when he brings them together, saw the Kingpin, saw a whole bunch of characters in it. Mm -hmm. A good trailer in terms of, here's a taste of that world. Yep. And again, what I really appreciate about Spider-Man from Insomniac right now and how they're promoting it is they're like, Mr. Negative, here's Mr. Negative yep. blowing this up. It's an Osborne mayor rally. He blows up some stuff and it's like, we already know he's much. not the main villain. He's yeah. a villain in this world, in this game. Yeah, so... My thing with Spider-Man, obviously, that looks great. One of my most hyped games for next year, for sure. That trailer got me hyped. I'm liking it. I'm a little worried with how much Mr. Negative we're seeing. Yeah. Because we're seeing him in a lot of different places. It wasn't just the mayor, uh, little whatever the fuck was going on. Yeah, there. rally. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm, I hope that we're getting a lot of bad guys. Like, I hope that there's a lot more than that. Because Mr. Negative, while cool that they're doing something that's different, I, I, I want, I'm looking for something a bit more traditional, at least... When, when it comes to the villains, at least for boss fights or appearances. And we'll see way too early. But the one thing that I was kind of ugh about is the character models don't really look that great for in the cutscenes mm -mm -mm. Um, when like, not masked and stuff. Gameplay looks totally fine. Yeah. More than fine. It looks great. Um, but like seeing Mary Jane, like she looked really plain. Yeah. And I was kind of like, ugh. And like I, Peter, meh. I'll give it to you. Yeah. There's something I, I thought too that didn't look 100% right not yeah. that it's wrong but it's like something different and, and weird I, to be fair i think that out of the context of it being next to detroit and erica and last of us and yeah, all these yeah, things yeah. where you're like holy shit these character models look amazing yeah maybe it won't be that distracting but i think it's what for me well i had a similar reaction to it where i was like this doesn't look right why not i think it's going to be that i think it is the juxtaposition of shoving him in there and when we get into this world you know what i mean yep. we we'll slowly get into it i think hopefully it'll turn around and not to mention the game apparently still has time 2018 is all we know. <laughs> um, anyways, though, so that was there. Uh, God of War was there. Another look. Yeah, God of War. gameplay this time. The kid getting involved, talking. Talking a lot. You don't like that? No, talking a lot more than uh, I've been led to believe. Yeah. Uh, from talking to Corey. Maybe it's just the scene. At, at E3. Maybe it is just the scene. Um, but, like, they've been really going out of their ways, being like, this isn't just a, you know, you have your your partner. This has to be there. You have to protect and, you know, worry about. Like, they're the kids part of the gameplay and to make things better. I mean, we saw it even in this where it's like, oh, look up, look behind you. And it's like, that's cool. 
Uh, but then there was a lot of extra, like what you'd expect from that type of thing of just like, see you later as he kills someone. It's like, I don't know that I need that in a God. See, of War I do game. like that. Cause I think th that's the thing is like my problem with Kratos always has been the right. There's no range of emotions. So if the kid's going to be there to give me levity and like tell me a story of like how he's all scared of the, de the soul eater or that's whatever. Great. And he's like, mom, mom made him out to be scary or whatever. It's like, that's really cool. Not enough for me to like fully judge, but like, I, I was a little bit like, ah, this is going further than I'd like in mm, that direction. Mm. Cause we've seen games like that before. Sure. And You're I, I thought hate hater, aren't you? No, I'm just critical. I'm <laughs> well, I'm, I, I'm very excited for all those things. It's just know, like, they, I mean, it's not going to stop me from playing the game, but sure. uh, I was excited that they were doing something different. And this is giving me little hints that maybe they're not. Mm, I, I think the relationship will evolve over time. I think we'll, I mean, maybe that's early in the game before we like fucking snap at him and make him hate us. Cause that's kind of going to hate. The fuck you know up I mean? Yeah, exactly. It was like, oh, I don't want, I don't want dad to die, but he's also a dick. That's always the problem with that. Hmm. And then, yeah, Last of, Last of Us Part 2, closing it out there. Yeah. In a crazy, fucking brutal, disgusting trailer that didn't feature Ellie, didn't feature Joel. Very, they showed it. Who, like, that's surprising. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't Days Gone. Days Gone is not even mentioned. Um, which is telling? I don't know. Where's that game? <laughs> I mean, That's another one that I thought was a for sure going to get a release date or at least a window. Well, I think here's the thing, right, is that you have to pick your battles. Like the problem I had with that trailer at the end there, right, was the fact of it popped up and for a while I'm looking at the chat. I'm debating publicly too what it is or whatever. And it's like. Are we, is this Days Gone? Is this Last of Us? And that's a problem for PlayStation. 100%. And so you have to, if you're going to show one of them, I don't think you show the other one. And so, you know, outside of an announcement thing or something like that. But maybe they showed here and then maybe at PSX they come out and they're mm -hmm. like, hey, here's Days Gone. Here's the yeah. trailer. Here's a demo. Here, or, uh, you know, here's a date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it looks awesome. Not much to say. It's like, holy crap, Last of Us. We know it's going to be good. Uh, my, my feelings and emotions on it, I think that it's great that they're not showing Ellie. I think that uh, introduce us to new characters and say, hey, this is going to be different. Yeah. That's important. Uh, it was very brutal, which yeah. is good because it shows that game's not afraid and it's going in. However, I don't know that we needed something that brutal. Like that was that was a lot for a promotional thing. Sure. Um, but whatever. That also is differentiating it from something like Days Gone. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people in the chat shouting out that they think it's Ellie's mom being put up because she did pull out the knife and put it to her belly and talk about something inside her being whatever. So maybe she's pregnant with Ellie at that point. Oh. So it'd be a flashback in Ellie's story or whatever, which is interesting. I was wondering what the tie in because when they pull out the one girl, they say clip her wings and I was like, oh, like a firefly. But then she was also talking about like she was using code words for people in summons or something like that or whatever. I don't know. For some reason, I took notes on that and then they are gone. So I don't know. But I had huh. words I wrote down or whatever. Interesting. But I that like makes that. sense. Yeah, I that like definitely that makes sense to go back and show that one. Right. And come back to it that way. Uh, overall, a good conference. The problem is I think it was just overhyped. I think all the games look great. I'm super excited for them. I can't wait for them. But it was just interesting, I think, to go hard here like this. I feel like we're still coming in to Black Friday. We're still coming in to everyone, you know, buy PlayStation, Horizon. I, we didn't even talk about it. They showed, I don't know, some of my notes got deleted. They showed uh, Horizon, of course, uh, some, some of the Frozen Wild stuff are there, which obviously looks like more Horizon I'm all about. But I feel like this would have played better and messaging after the fact at PSX. I feel like that that's where I would have done this. Not, But I don't know. What the fuck do I know about business? Mm. You got to take care of all your partners and have yeah. people over there. No dreams? A big a big uh, point to make? That <laughs> dreams, the dream is dead, guys. The dream is dead? Dreams the dream is, dream. is fucking dead. I dreamed a dream, and now it's gone good, forever. Good Lord. Um, I do want to give a shout out to the presentation overall of the entire thing, because, man, I going into it, I was like, dude, the video wall looks awesome. Yeah. They did such a good job with it. And, again, I think the pacing of this presentation was fantastic so he's been killing it the last couple years with all this and i think that this is even more of an evolution of that like just thinking about this like what's e3 gonna look like next year exciting stuff man. yeah of course yeah really so yeah go back and watch it of course if you missed it you're listening later watching later uh we're putting up our reactions live reactions to the stream on youtube.com slash kind of funny games you can watch along with us get it all there but stand out what, what what's your favorite thing you saw uh, wait, real quick, Jacob Pleffer from the chat says, breaking news from Wario64, the YouTube description of the Shadow of Colossus trailer confirms February 6th, 2018. No. And the Shadow of Colossus was there too. I don't know what the fuck happened oh, to my yeah. notes. I mean, and that's surprising too. That looked great. And again, I can't believe that game is real. Like, I can't believe they're remaking Shadow of Colossus. That's 
awesome. Uh, and it, it looked fantastic, and it looks a lot further along than I would expect. So, All right, February, February 6th. 6th. Meanwhile, though, for, well, we shouldn't be looking at the chat, but anyways. Hmm. And we don't do it, but it's a different show today. It's, it's all different, different you know what I mean? Foles says they just announced a Switch r- Rocket League li- really Oh, jeez. I need a glass Rocket of water. Rocket League Switch release date. Yeah, let me see if I can get that for you. Rocket League. Sure. Uh, here we go. Yeah, November 14th, the release date for Rocket League on Switch. <laughs> that's right around the corner. Can't wait. Yeah, that's a good one. Let me drop that back in a new date so I don't forget. So, right. Well, I guess I did it here, but again. Who knows anymore? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to do a show when it's actually live and we're breaking news, and I don't have time to gather everything up. But Rocket League Switch, November fourteenth. Get hyped. Um, speaking of Switch, Gregway, mm. second item on the Roper Report are the Nintendo financials. Uh, this is from IGN.com. Worldwide sales of the Nintendo Switch version of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild have reached 4.7 million units. According to sales data from Nintendo, this figure was reached as of September 30th, 2017. It's worth empathizing, emp- emphasizing that this is just the Switch version of the game and doesn't account for sales of the Wii U version. For a look at the top-selling Nintendo Switch titles, check out this list below. Zelda, 4.70 million units. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe 4.42 million units. Splatoon 2 3.61 million units. 1 2 Switch 1.37 million <laughs> units and Arms 1.35 million units. These figures include units bundled with hardware as well as downloadable versions. You can read the additional sales mode over here in the latest financial thing. More content for The Legend of Zelda is coming this year with the second DLC pack, the Champions Ballad, slated to launch in 2017. You called out when we were talking earlier in the pre-show pre-show about that stuff that, <coughs> excuse me, that, that's that been reconfirmed by Reggie, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that uh, Breath of the Wild DLC pack 2 will be coming sometime in 2017 by the end of the year. you got to imagine that that is... Uh, well, all we have left is November or December. My gut would tell me December. However, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Champions Amiibo Pack oh. comes out November 12th, I want to say. Okay. That sounds kind of perfect. Yeah. But don't you think, do, is that a game you need to get hype about, though? You think we need to know about that ahead of time? Or is that just something you can put out? And- well, the thing is, going off these numbers, 4.7 million people have the game, yeah. right? So, yeah. cool. Like, uh, <laughs> so the, like they're with there. The, but with, yeah, they're there. And it's like, I think, yeah, they need to know about it. But I also, we're not going to get like a direct for it. I wouldn't imagine. I think gotcha. that's more of like a press release announcement. Hey, it's out today. Um, the Switch has a great thing going on. With, you turn it on, there's all the news. And it, it, yeah. it does a good job of communicating what you need to know. So. And you can stay out of the way of Mario right now. Yep. As it continues 100%. to run. Ruck shot over social media and you can't yeah. get away from it. Yeah. Because it's phenomenal. It is fun. Nominal. Dude, I couldn't, uh, couldn't update get over. from Media Molecule. Lay it on me. Oh God. From the Twitter. Congrats to all the Worldwide Studios team showing at Paris Games Week. Those amazing trailers are getting us extra excited to share news soon. Hashtag dreams. PS4. Sam Espinali responds, How long though? It's been ages now. Media Molecule says this year. Heart. Okay, so maybe PSX for them? Maybe. Who, who the knows? beta was supposed to be in the summer. No one ever fucking ever popped up to talk about that. We love you, Media Molecule. I'm just worried about you over there. I need to get Kara in the room with you. Figure out what's going on over there. Save the day. Can't wait for fucking goddamn Detroit. Can't goddamn wait. Goddamn Detroit. Uh, sadly, I have to keep waiting for Detroit, Tim. Yes. But if I want to know what was coming out today, where would I go? Sorry, uh, going back to the Nintendo thing. Real no, quick. no, you wanted to keep reading the chat and keep ignoring I'm gonna, me. I'm going to turn the chat off. They're done. They're dead to me. Thank you. They're dead to me. What's There's the, some important news there, though. I wanted to get No, you did well. You did um, well. Again, a ruck shot kind of funny games daily, but you're used to. We're hanging out. The the Nintendo uh, financials coming out. Switch only selling a little over two million in America. Something about that seems off to me. But it's wasn't that, that was the old figure? Is that the, is that the yeah, same thing? Yeah, that's a couple days ago they put out, and that's what they said. Okay, and it's like, ooh, that's not as much of a runaway success as I would have thought it would have been. Well, that's because they got in their they own way, though. They can't keep them in stores yeah. and all now that Now they stuff. can. Now they're yeah. everywhere. Yeah, I, I get it, and you know, we'll see, Like especially with the, the holidays coming up, and those those numbers are tied to it coming out in March and all that stuff, but like, that's making excuses. Like the, Talking about the Switch, everyone's acting like it is the biggest thing ever, and it is in relation to other things, uh, but 2 million in America, not what I'd expect. I would have expected it to at least be around 4. mm I think if they would have kept them in stores, they would have. Yeah. But I think they got in the way of themselves on that one. But I think now you'll have a holiday season where they don't. 
I think the fact that now that it's available, you can go get it. The fact that they're in Target. That's going to last one week, by the way. If you want a Nintendo Switch, your time is now. Really? Like, you, oh, you, we think yeah. as we get closer and closer to Christmas, oh it gets my harder God, and harder. Dude, by, like, honestly, once we get into second week in November, these things are going to be gone. Mm-hmm. I, this history has shown that even like with 3DSs, that you can't get them during the holiday season. Gotcha. They just... Yeah, I was, I was Vita's gone. I, I was. Trying, I wanted to get a Gen the Mario bundle or whatever, so I could have the red Joy Cons. So you could have the Mario in the game, mm-hmm. and, or the system. And so, yeah, I, I kept doing the uh, GameStop thing where you like put in your zip code and then like try to have them hold it at stores. And it took me like it was like the third GameStop I put in there that actually had one and held yeah. it for me. But yeah, interesting. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Anyways, where do I go for games? Uh oh, man! You can go to the just take a shot, mom and pop digital drop shops, and a uh, snuffle off a lock, I guess, right? Do, 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 um, do, do, yeah, do, kind of funny do, games do, do, daily do, do, show yeah. host each and every weekday. There you go, nailed it. Out today, King Oddball on Switch, mm. Lost Dimension on PC, Wanderlust on PC. Uh, new dates, as I said, Rocket League is coming to Switch now on November fourteenth. Shadow of the Class is apparently coming out the sixth of February, twenty eighteen. Uh, Destiny 2 I'm going back now through the notes Destiny 2 December 5th Curse of the Osiris but I guess from like you know we don't look at the chat usually when we do the show because it's supposed to be a polished podcast but today's a special exception so I guess I don't have to worry about you in your car right now driving to pick up your laundry you already knew all this from the beginning it's the Twitch people who come in and out that you got to recap information for well, it's a po- polished video polished podcast so I didn't have to do it I just saw over here too by the way PlayStation VR Star Child what a terrible trailer that was for that game some kind of narrative VR experience game thing they're going to put out there. But then like the trailer was just like her making a, a phantom hand and touching stuff. No, no, not going to have that. Uh, I don't have any deals from the day for you, but instead I do have reader mail. Remember, we're doing reader mail live now, which is weird. You can go well, just this one time because again, show ended. We went live. We're recording right now at 1020 in the morning. Usually the show gets recorded. At what, Kevin? Noon, noon 30. Yeah, so we're a different kind of show today. So I'm jumping in. To the chat here to see what we got down. Or not the chat, I should say. But kindoffunny.com slash KFGD to be part of the show. If you're listening later, of course, you can do it. People worry about that. Uh, dreams, of course, as you do. More LaCroix, huh? I apologize. You're not, you don't have to apologize. It's a, it's a hot show. We're coming in hot today. That's what people want out of those. Mm. We're going to start with Edison Kane. The theme of this show was no release dates. Has the string of game delays made Sony back away from hard dates until the closest possible moment? 100%. Yeah. And I think it's a it's a wise strategy. I mean, it's easy for us to be very critical of this conference for not giving us those release dates. Who does that really affect? No one, right? right. It's just we're looking at as people that want news that that are looking to these conferences to tell us something new about games. Uh, to the general public, this conference was a success. They're going to be able to not watch it. They just go on YouTube and pick and choose the trailers that they're sure. going to watch. And God of War and Spider-Man and Detroit are going to get them excited. So I think that in that, that, it's doing its job. And I think that, yeah, what is bad press? Delays. Sure, sure, sure. It sucks because I, I want to be able to look forward and understand what we have to talk about coming up. But... That's just we still style know, now. right? It's still there. It's uh, it's it's weird. I still wonder. Maybe the the wild card to this entire conversation is PSX. In the way that is this a one two punch now? Do we get to PSX and stuff gets started now? You re- put out release dates there. You say something else there. Game Awards is that what you're looking for? You're looking for that bump where you have an ultimate cut of Spider Man God of War trailer that goes out and actually ends with a date there. No, I feel because I I thought I feel like Paris is a weird placement yes. for a conference period mm-hmm. in the way that traditionally you're still hyping your holiday releases for 2017. We shouldn't be you wouldn't have them looking at 2018. And that's what I love so much about PSX in the past is, hey, we're past Black Friday. Yeah. People have bought the games they are going to buy. Let's talk about what's coming to get you hyped for next year. Mm-hmm. And that's what I liked about it. And I don't know how that fits into it anymore. Yeah, it's interesting. Game Awards, maybe one. We're not going to see multiple. But you have to to just kind of think about it. Like, if the games are coming out, let's say, if there's any coming out in January or February, yeah, that date has to be announced sometime in early December. Yeah. So that does place it at PSX and Game Awards. 
Yeah. So you'd imagine if one of those has a release date that's that early, it would be Game Awards or PSX. It's one of those two with the... Now I think it would be eyes to... Well, fuck. Did, I always forget this. Did, was Days Gone one of the ones at E3 that had 2018 in the trailer? Ooh, I don't remember. I think Days Gone was one that didn't. Okay. Okay. Well, let me see what we got here. Days Gone. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, you're right. Still 2 BG. GameStop is putting it in the first half of 2018. Not that that's like yeah. Bible truth or anything. The interesting, I mean, here's the, the, that would be your ace in the hole still, right? All right, cool. We ended with Last of Us Part 2 here. A zombie, post-apocalyptic, yada, 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 world. Now let it die down for a few weeks. Come out at PSX and be like, hey, Days Gone is coming, and it is coming February, whatever. It mm-hmm. is coming uh, in the in that window that was so successful for Horizon and that's been so successful for a million I mean, that's To me, games. honestly, that seems like the right place for yeah. Days Gone is put it out when Horizon came out and give it that same type of push. Yeah. That is its only real chance at success. Otherwise, it's going to get drowned. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's going to be so many other bigger things coming up, right? Uh, also from kindoffunny.com slash KFGD, the place you can go to be part of the show. Alex B says, on the topic of lack of a release dates, am I crazy to believe that Sony is waiting for Red Dead Redemption's release date in order to put three AAA exclusive titles in the best position to succeed? I don't think you're crazy. I don't think that's likely. Yeah. Like, I have, you, you got to imagine that Sony knows its partners and knows where they're going and they can only kind of make their roadmap to the best of their abilities. Sure. And I think that they're already competing with their self in so many ways, like we were just talking about that. I think that they can only worry about that stuff and they know that red dead is going to be great. I don't think that they're going to worry about red dead competing with their products. You'd like to think so. Yeah. You'd like to think they have inside information too, obviously, because they have to in mm-hmm. terms of like one stuff is coming. I'm going to keep going through this now here. Gonna do this while I talk to you. Uh, Angelo or E.M. writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD just like you can and says one more question. Guess what? This is your first question. Don't fucking worry. What does Sucker Punch's new game mean for the future of Infamous? Do you think it's officially dead or just held back for now? Thanks for all you do, Angelo. A lot of people are freaking out. Infamous is dead in the chat. Like, We've had a lot of Infamous games, and I'm speaking as somebody who loves Infamous. Don't get me wrong. It's the fact that what inclu- if you include the Vampire game, we have four Infamous games that are like on their own that were great and awesome and all you know all told fantastic, but a significant chunk of time for Sucker Punch mm-hmm. from PlayStation Three to PlayStation Four working on this series. I'm sure they want to stretch their legs and do something different and Absolutely. feel something different. I think that's what it means. Infamous is not dead. I would imagine the next time Infamous comes around, it would be a reboot in mm-hmm. on the PlayStation 5 or something to that effect where it is just like, we're going back, it's Cole. Maybe not, maybe not even a reboot. Maybe it just is a yeah, Cole's back or something. Maybe it won't be Cole. Infamous isn't dead. Everybody loves fucking superheroes. Sucker Punch loves making those superhero games. I'm sure you'll get another Infamous down the lane line. I just think it's about time to start something in this ghost game. I think it looks awesome. It'll be interesting to see the storytelling uh, uh, lessons they've had, the gameplay lessons they've had, and combine that into a new IP and put it out. Hmm. I'm pretty I, that one, like uh, somebody had it in here. Hold on, let me see if I can find it again. Uh, somebody's question was, "What was your favorite?" They were asking what your favorite game was and why is Detroit. What was your favorite announcement out of there? There's a lot of awesome stuff there. Yeah. Ghost is on my list. Really? In terms of like, well, it was. It's, I mean, Sucker Punch. It's right? one of my it. favorite developers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And okay. even before they put Sucker Punch on the screen, I was like, man, this trailer looks cool. I hope mm. it's going to be gameplay. I like. I know I like Sucker Punch gameplay. Mm. I like I, whole narrative they were telling there of just like I studied you. Like I think that's so cool to have a villain who's going up against somebody who's like a warrior, right? But he's studied traditions. This villages. That sounds fucking awesome. Yeah. It's, it's not at the top of my list, but it's on my list. I think for me, Erica would be the top of my list yeah. just because didn't that's brand new to me. And I was like, oh, this looks really awesome. It does look very similar to Detroit that every time I see wows the hell out of me. I'm like, fuck, this is going to be so awesome. Yeah. Um, Spider-Man, it just looks so great. And yeah. I'm just like, this is going to be such a fun game to play. So Spider-Man, out of everything I've seen, that's the one I want to play the most. Yeah. Um, Erica's the one that I'd be like, oh, from this presentation, like that, I'd give that my, oh, I like you. For me, it was D- Detroit. I mean, in terms of like the game that like one that, that from the, all the stuff we saw today, the stuff that I was like, holy shit. Yeah, I can't wait to play that Detroit. And that's why it was too that 
we had had the blue balls for a couple of trailers there where they ended like any real date no real date fuck and when it was yeah. Detroit I was like if Detroit's coming out in February holy fucking shit I mean d- the story of Detroit from everything we've seen from all the different scenarios it's like especially coming off of Blade Runner right now and the hype yeah. of that I'm like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it seems like they're about to nail that similar kind of androids have feelings too androids are people yeah. too yeah oh, it's gonna be good no that's always such an interesting one and like to what's interesting is watching it and how it as usually with any quantic dream, the threads they're tying together where it is like car comes back, reset, right? And then starts waking up and having to break her own protocols. And then all these other uh, AIs is doing the same thing and re- leading a rebellion. Like, can't fucking wait. Uh, John writes into kind of funny.com slash KFGD and says, I've yet to finish Horizon Zero Dawn. And when jumping back into it, I was completely lost. With the DLC coming out, should I look into restarting it or just grind through the main story mission to get to the end and be ready for new content? I don't like it when you say grind. You know what I mean? Do whatever's going to be enjoyable for you. I thought yeah. Horizon's story was awesome. I'm and I, the gameplay was great. I can't wait for Frozen Wilds. Mm-hmm. I would say you got to you got to do what you want to do, but I, that seems like a lot to go back and restart it. Yeah, I wouldn't restart it. I mean, what you're talking about grinding through the story, like it, you, it's doable. It's easy to to find just the linear story path and play it more like an Uncharted. That's what I did, and I enjoyed it a lot. So I would recommend doing that. Tenny writes into kind of funny dot com slash kfgd and says why no vita because tiny sit down we have to talk about the vita it's over and it's hard for me to say too i'm not a fan of saying it i know there's still plenty of indies and japanese companies supporting the vita playstation is not one of them <laughs> playstation is not someone supporting the vita uh don't worry you have a great library of playstation vita games there's still great stuff coming to the playstation vita but I was more impressed that they put PlayStation VR in the fucking sizzle reel. Yeah. And it was PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro, and the VR headset. And I was like, all right. And they actually had a bunch of VR games in there. And like Again, I said, we're seeing the, the baby steps to, all right, here's London's game, uh, yeah. Blood and whatever it was. And it's going to be a real quote unquote game from what it looks like. Yeah. No, I was very impressed with Blood the, the pacing of the presentation from the pre-show through the normal show of how much time they gave to PSVR, how much time they gave to indie games, how much time they gave to third party, how much time they gave to exclusives like or uh, first party. It, I was like, wow, it was the most balanced conference I think we've ever gotten. Interesting. I, I, what I like that how they really made use of the pre-show. Mm-hmm. The pre-show was really well done. Shout out to Sid and crew over there. That was a really good one. Uh, James writes in says sup guys that last of us part two teaser was insane I didn't expect it to be last of us because of the lack of Joel and Ellie I found myself surprised and a bit concerned that scene seemed like something I would have liked to have experienced in the game and to be surprised by seemingly important character, new seemingly important characters. Do you guys think this game was announced too early? If we get a scene like that every now and then for the next few years, I'd rather than just go dark so we won't get teased to death until it eventually releases in 2021. Hope you boys enjoyed the, hi- enjoyed the hype. That was pretty dope. James. I think Naughty Dog is really good at understanding what moments not to spoil. Yeah. And I think that when we saw Uncharted Lost Legacy for the first time, it was a good example of what we saw them premiere and what we ended up playing in the game. Very similar, but different enough. Having her have the like cloak on yeah. changed it, right? I have a feeling that scene will play out differently in the final game. How much differently? Probably about as differently as Lost Legacy, which is not that much. But they know what they're showing. And I think that this was a targeted thing to show. This game is brutal. This game doesn't necessarily need Joel or Ellie uh, to be the last of us. And it expands the world. When you think about the Naughty Dog games too, uh, Uncharted, like since Last of Us, Uncharted 4 and Lost Legacy, both of them featuring those wide linear segments uh, where you go to Madagascar in 4 yeah, or yeah. Uh, whatever that chapter was. I think it was chapter 4 in Lost Legacy where you're in the, the, the open world that's not really an open world. You got to imagine Last of Us is going to adopt that philosophy in some way i think there's going to be a lot going on in last of us and i think that there'll be it'll still be that linear storytelling but i think that this is just a scene in a more wide open place area where you go and there was a lot of different things like that yeah no dog knows what they're doing in terms of the story they don't want to ruin anything clutch for you too big but i mean this is the problem with press conferences or gaming in general is like with all due respect to everybody who shows anything about a game i'd always rather play that than see it 
That's, I mean, can, I, can you imagine how awesome it would be to play that scene and like, are they really gonna hit this girl on the arm? Holy shit, they're really hitting this girl on the arm. And like, play all that stuff and not know what was coming. To play Spider Man and not know that Miles is it isn't to play the like. There's so many things that if we could all go on blackout, that'd be great. But the problem is we can't, and they need to hype their games and they need mm-hmm. to market their stuff. But I think you'll be all right. Yeah. Here's the million dollar question. Benji K says, with that trailer recap of a show, do you think Sony will bring anything substantial to PSX? I mean, it's, it's complicated. Like, I again, the thing with this conference is, as much of its trailer recaps, like they're new trailer recaps. There was a lot of new stuff here. There was big game announcements. Like, yeah. this wasn't a bad conference by any means. So, I don't know what more they could show. Like, having all the having Sucker, Punch, Sucker Punch's new IP is like that's that's a big gun. Yeah, you know, yeah. showing Last of Us is like, oh my god! Like, what are they missing? Dreams, Final Fantasy remake. Death Stranding. I think it's not even. Is what I think. The question here of what PSX is this year is just the fact that this conference was great. It's I think people are down on it because of hype. We do the same every time we don't like a conference. It's usually because we've overhyped it for mm-hmm. ourselves. And I mean, we as a community of people who like video games. The fact that this is what they get put out on this giant stage and made such a big deal about just makes you wonder what's coming to PSX and like what is PSX going to be mm-hmm. and is it going to be like I, you know is this the year that PSX truly becomes just the PlayStation community event and if it does that what does that do to the people there and the people watching, right? Because that's the thing all the time. We always talk about this. There's the people who go to something, the people who buy a season pass, the people who are embedded in a game or a community that'll go out and pay their money and do it, right? You want to keep them happy the most. But what does it say if like the general public surrounding PSX isn't paying as much attention because they don't have anything like this? Is Sony stretched too thin to make other announcements? Should they have kept some of this for PSX? I mean, you'd, you'd think that the easy answer right now is that PSX would bring all the release dates. But I think the fact that we didn't see that here says we're not going to get that. Mm, mm. Well, then. I'll just be happy to go to the PlayStation Store. I always like that store they have a PSX. Oh, yeah. But I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I'm very... It's a very... And I like people I saw, I saw people in uh, our subreddit or one of our, our forums talking about the fact that like, oh man, it's just weird. They haven't announced anything for PSX really outside of like the early bird tickets and the Friday thing. It's like, that's not that weird. PSX always comes together super late. It feels like, I don't know. Cause like, like last year, do we even have tickets yet? Wasn't that that weird thing? There was well, one last year, year was a fuck one up. year where they like ran up like a month before. Like, all right, fine, we're doing right, it. Here it is. We're doing it. Um, uh, Joey Bats writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, after watching the new Spider-Man trailer, I'm starting to feel more concerned about the amount of playable cutscenes I'm seeing. At first, I scoffed at the criticism of it seemed like a QTE of QTE after QTE, but I really haven't seen enough gameplay yet to get me truly hyped. Do you think the core gameplay mechanics are still being tweaked? And this is why we haven't, why one, why we haven't one seen actual gameplay and two, Still don't have a solid release date. Thanks, Joey. P.S. Did it seem like a moment? Did it seem like for a moment or two, MJ was playable in a section? Briefly did to me. Yeah, really. I, I noticed that when too. she was like uh, walking around the yeah. crates or whatever. Yep. Gotcha. Uh, so it was like that. That'd be cool. Um, I think the QTE thing. It's just that stuff. Those are the moments, the, the big selling moments. So that's why they're in trailers, right? Yeah. Um, I do think this game is going to be very heavy with those, but I think that's going to be part of the gameplay. You got to imagine there's going to be a lot of open you're swinging around just normal style content that you'd expect from a spider-man game i'm not Street worried thugs to fight yeah i'm not worried about the the balance you just need to kind of temper your expectations if you don't think there's going to be a lot of them but it's also one of those things where how you how do you make those big set piece moments fun to play unless they're like that not it's, to mention in a sizzle can't. rail trailer like right yeah. like how many times you, you sh- we saw him jumping around punching and kicking stuff you and me when we went and saw the behind closed doors demo right of spider-man and like how there was difference, how you're using your gadgets, how you're doing this. I'm like, all right, this is fine. Mm-hmm. This is going to be fine. I'm not worried about it. I don't I don't think, I don't know how heavy QTEs will be. They're going to be there, of course, but that's also how you want to play out those moments to feel like Spider-Man and have really cool shit happen. I think. Yep. IMO. Looking for a good question or two to round out the show here. Let's see what we got. Everybody's mad about, you know, the same stuff over and over again. Yeah. Singing a song while I look through this. There you go. Oh, Kevin's cl- snapping. He's having enjoying a song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Thomas says, 
Why do so many games now find it necessarily to be shockingly brutal or vulgar? Does it actually help their game? I know people talk about it, but does it drive people to the game or just to YouTube to watch it? I don't think that he said, why are so many games finding it necessary? I don't think so many games are. I just think that games are doing that. In the old Greg Miller analogy of games being silly putty and everybody grabbing it and stretching out in different ways, we're just finding more and more people who want to do that. And in the Last of Us world, it is a brutal world. And yeah. They want to show that to you. I mean, that being as narrative based as it is and the narrative being as fucked up and quote unquote real uh, as it is, that makes sense. I, I think that we did see, obviously, with like Mortal Kombat going back in the day, there was a lot of that where it's like gore and shit and vulgarity for the sake of it. Yeah. Um, God of War is another example of that, I think, uh, two generations ago, even leading into last gen. Uh, but this God of War does look different. Right, it doesn't yeah. look like it's leaning on the. I'm gonna rip your fucking face open from yeah, your yeah, jaw. I'm gonna, you're, I'm gonna yank yeah. your head back and you have your neck separate. Uh, Jesus, still that was there gross. a little bit, but it's not like the the main selling point of it. Yeah. Um. So I think that while God of War is kind of like toned back the cartoony ish over the topness, uh, Last of Us is like, all right, cool. We're, we're gonna flesh out the world. And I, I like I was saying earlier, it's like, yeah, it is a lot to show, and like that was uncomfortable to watch, but that. You're supposed to feel that way. And yeah. I, I don't think that it was gratuitous. Like, I think that it's. Yeah, the bone the world. didn't shoot out. It wasn't like, it was just like. Full. Like, that's the world they're in. Yeah, you know, yeah. It was yeah. fucked up. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, it's like, was there any other trailers that were like, oh, that's too far? Shockingly brutal? Yeah. I mean, Detroit in a way, but it, like, that's not so much brutal as much as it's fucked up. Yeah, it's fucked up. It's playing with your emotions and stuff. And I think that's the point of it. I think it's just uh, as games continue to expand, that's how it's going to be. And they want to get people into it. I like the cursing in the London Detroit. things. No, well, oh. yeah, no, of course. I like anything Detroit does. Don't worry about that. Except the real Detroit. I, the first time I ever went to Detroit, you know how people talk about bad things about Detroit. I'm like, it can't be that bad. Landed, and in the car to the airport, we passed just a f car on fire on the highway. Like, just abandoned in the Symbolism. middle on fire. I was like, well, this is this. We are in RoboCop. <laughs> time to squat up. This is where one of you goes to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. You give me your name, your username, your platform of choice, and tell me why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come find you. Everybody has a good time. Today, Anderson Miller needs help. He's on PlayStation 4 and in real life. His PSN name is Billy Miller. No, Billy R. Miller 14. He says, hey, Greg and Tim, I have a special kind of squad up. I am a senior undergraduate student at Vanderbilt University and the events coordinator for the club Vanderbilt Gaming. This Saturday, November 4th, we will be having our signature event, Vandy underscore LAN 8, where we host multiple tournaments including Super Smash Brothers, League of Legends, Overwatch, FIFA, Hearthstone, and Mario Kart. The event will run from 1 p.m. to 1 a.m. with food and drinks provided throughout the event and a raffle for the biggest prize being Super Mario Odyssey Nintendo Switch Bundle. We are also partnering with the local Extra Life chapter here in Nashville for our event and the latter half of the, their event to raise money for the Monroe Carl Children's Hospital. I want to invite you and any and all the best friends in the area to attend our event and help raise money for a good cause. Uh, people can check out our Facebook page, Vanderbilt Gaming, for more information. If anybody is down to play some Destiny 2 on PS4, my username is Billy R. Miller 14 Thank you guys for all you do and have a great week. Oh, we will. We will. Remember, Extra Life is this weekend. We'd love it if you join Team Extra Life, Team Kind of Funny over at kindoffunny.com slash extra life or just watch live as we broadcast all day long and all night long on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Donate or join our team or go to the Monroe Carl Children's Hospital. Support Vanderbilt Gaming on Facebook. Get in their Extra Life shenanigans. Shenanigans. Tim, what did we get wrong on a very run and gun show here? I also saw that we, our wonderful mods hadn't had a chance to clear the thing either. So you mm -hmm. saw that. So you're yep. not reading Andrea's yep. stuff. Yep, yep. Thank you, mods, for all you do, by the way. I never, ever thank you enough for doing that on the forums. Mick with the mouth says, Resident Evil 7 is not a hero's first substantial trailer with gameplay footage was released about a month ago on September 21st. Totally missed that. Thank you. Remember, if we're wrong when we're live, go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what the facts are, ma'am, and we'll correct them here. Ghost of, oh, this is a uh, Pi Blacon says, Ghost of... Tsushima is an open world game. Oh, according to PlayStation's Twitter account. Oh dear. Yes. Metal Spidey says Erica for the most part is live action. That's why it looks. Yeah, we know. Uh, don't don't you rip his head off. Put the head back on. Kratos. Put the head back on. Going to the second page. Okay, all out. 
Oh. A lot of people giving me shit about saying the dream is dead. <laughs> Truth hurts sometimes, guys. Dreams is going to be fascinating. Apparently, it's coming to PSX. That's the only other place they can do some of it. Dreams and Days Gone, I guess, going to be the stars of PSX. Okay, you're taking offense with this one. N- no. Uh, Lucy Dream says, according to Nintendo sales figures released today, the Switch has sold 7.6 million live to date, 3.11 million in the US. But I, I could have sworn. I mean, I looked at their financials and I saw the 2 million. But I, again, that's what I was saying. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Let me read what I got here now. Hmm. I'm going to read. I'm just going to read from CNN. All right. Okay. And I don't know if I'm going to get to the fact we were looking for or not. Um, the Japanese video game maker ramped up. Oh, things haven't been this good for Nintendo in a long time. The Japanese video game maker ramped up its sales and profit forecast on Monday as consumers raced to buy its latest console, the Switch. Nintendo said it now expects operate operating profit for the current fiscal year of uh, 1.06 billion dollars, nearly double the 572 million it predicted three months ago. Uh, that would be the best performance since 2010 when smash hit devices like the Wii and DS were still selling. Well, uh, when the Switch went on sale in March, the company said it could, couldn't could ship enough devices to meet the huge demand. Those problems seem to be easing. Nintendo now expects to sell 14 million of the console for the year ending March 2018, up from the previous forecast of 10 million. And it's not just the hardware boosting the bottom line. Super Mario Odyssey, blah, 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 blah. They're talking about how great that is. I don't know if they have the breakdown exactly what you're looking for. But this is what I was talking about is I knew these numbers got updated today, I thought. Interesting. Let's see. The Verge has got me more information. Let's see what the Verge got here. Mm-hmm. 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 I mean, those numbers are definitely more in line with what I would expect. Yeah. You're just worried about the American number, though, right? That's yeah. That's your thing. Combined with the 2.7... Meh. Yeah, 16 point... 16.74 million units in total. For comparison, the company expects this. Oh, I see what they're saying here. Coming out. This, yeah, I don't, have, I don't have a breakdown for America on okay. any of these things off the top of my head. Continuing with it, Ryan T says, Greg, in the list of releases for today, you forgot or or whatever. Oh, uh, the one they announced today it's and put out? $20 right now on PlayStation Store. Also, Dead Hungry and Stifled are out tomorrow. I said that. that was like, those got said. All right. Those got said. All right. Those got said. And to, to, for tomorrow, those got said. Capitalist Pig says there are five infamous games. If you're going to count Infamous Festival of Blood, Infamous First Light would be the last. Ah, one you case. got me with that one. Good call. Good call. Fetch's story. How could I forget? I love the fetch. So that's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been your run and gun kind of funny games daily for Monday, October thirtieth, twenty seventeen. Tomorrow, Tim Gettys and Andrea Renee will host this show. I. I'm going to be going to Giant Bomb, doing the Bombcast. Ooh. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. A Halloween Bombcast. See you all about that. <laughs> Remember, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about before giving you perspective, jumping into your questions, and having a good time. You need to be part of the show by going to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Leave your questions, comments, concerns, bad PSN names, and everything else. We'll read them off of there for the show. Uh, you can get the show as we record it live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, or you can get it later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or podcast services around the globe no matter where you consume the show thank you very much we love making it for you yeah now before I, we do the lights and the handshake and all that stuff mm-hmm. is there a morning show coming up there had been debate about this i don't know want to do it, it it's it's up to whoever's out there i hear nick out there clanking around yeah, doing yeah. stuff if you're watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games there might be a kind of funny morning show when i come I'll back to read out. subs and tips I will tell you. The what plan we was we weren't going to. I wasn't I mean, sure what the plan was. I thought it was down. all a very, it was all mm-hmm. nebulous is what I remember being left as. Doesn't matter if you're watching later. Thanks for sticking it out. Until next time. It's been our pleasure to serve you.